Hello and welcome back to another character creation video. My name's Lumin and today we're having a look at Scald against the Black Priory. <laughs> and I couldn't be more excited. Scald is inspired by role-playing games of yesteryear, combining modern design and compelling storytelling with authentic 8-bit looks and charms. Delve into a dark fantasy world full of deadly creatures, tragic heroes, and Lovecraftian horror for an epic retro-style adventure rich in exploration and tactical turn-based combat. Do you have what it takes to lead a company of broken heroes from the tainted shores of Idra to the gates of the Black Priory and beyond? I've played a bunch of Skald, and I can safely and easily say that this is a fantastic game. That I love this game. It's everything I want from a game and more. It's perfection. And it has a character creation system, which is why we are here. I actually spoke to the devs and they were so humble about this. They were like, oh yeah, well, we don't really have all that much in the character creation system. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> I'm here to prove them wrong. It's ridiculous. There's so much here. There are so many choices. They are meaningful. And they are fun. So, we're going to jump in. We're going to have a look. But before we do that, I'm just going to say, quick and dirty, buy the game. Play it. If this is your kind of thing, yeah, it's so worthwhile. <sighs> Alright. When you do jump in, there are a few accessibility options that are shown to you and you can actually change the way the text looks you can put a crt filter on and a few other things then you come in here and your first real choice is your difficulty you can change the difficulty once you're in the game so it's not that big a choice here it's not that big a deal it's not that important and i just want to say right off the bat old school games even if they're only old school style games even if they have modern features they can still be a little unforgiving never and i mean never think that you have to go for the more difficult difficulties you can go on narrative you can go on easy no one's gonna judge you you game in and if you game in and you're having fun that's good enough okay i just wanted to say that narrative mode this is a difficulty for players who like to experience the game's story and set in with minimal focus on combat and grinding. It makes it much easier, it makes the combat and everything else attached to it and surrounding it a breeze, and it also helps you with your checks, so your dialogue checks, your skill checks, everything else. It makes it easier, right? Easy mode is a great way for players who are new to this style of role-playing game to experience Skald. Combat is forgiven and there should be little need to optimize character builds. Dice rolls are weighted in the player's favor. Normal. Normal is the game's intended difficulty setting. There is only very limited artificial smoothing of certain dice rolls. And then finally hard. This is intended to offer the player a challenge without feeling unfair. Dice rolls are slightly weighted in the opponent's favor, making them more deadly. For the purposes of this video, we'll go for normal. Then your next choice is class. Probably the biggest choice. You don't get to change this afterwards. And this will affect more than just combat. Because based on the class that you're going with, you'll take obviously a certain background to suit it, certain attributes to suit it, and you'll get certain feats that match the class, that go with the class. It'll have its own talent tree and stuff like that. It's the biggest choice because it also affects how you interact with other characters in the game. Much like a game like Baldur's Gate has dice rolls outside of combat, this has the same. So keep all of that in mind as you are picking here. Uh, certain classes will be better at subterfuge, things like lock picking. Uh, you know, a, an arms master might be better at smashing open a door, but a thief could potentially pick the lock, if you know what I'm saying. So that kind of stuff, keep it all in mind. Also, please keep in mind that you're going to have a party of players. You are customizing your own character here. You will get to customize your other party members and sort of, you know, make them the way you want them. But you are customizing your own character here who is just one part of that party. So you can actually very easily and safely go for a quote unquote support character. And you can sort of be happy with that and you can still experience the game just fine. So don't feel like you need to be the carry of the team. Someone else can be that. You can do what suits you that said 
The devs did suggest that Arms Master, that's the first one over here, it's a warrior archetype, is the easiest and it'll provide you with the smoothest experience. All right, so the classes. First up, the Arms Master, archetype warrior. The Arms Master is a warrior that does not have a specialized feet tree. Instead, the Arms Master has access to all combat centered feet trees and they start with extra development points to represent their martial expertise. It's kind of a cool way of going about it because you can sort of dip into different styles with it and that's kind of amazing. Uh, the main attribute for this class is obviously strength. Then you can see some of the particulars over here. They may use any armor and they can use all weapon types of blade, axe, club and bow. It's sort of like the standard fighter or warrior in most of these types of RPG games. Keep in mind when you're in the character creation screen here and you see green text like this, you can actually click on it and it'll pop up and tell you what exactly that is. So a warrior is a frontline fighter that can take and deal large amounts of damage. If you want to know what development points are, development points are gained when leveling up. They're used to buy ranks and feats. So you can sort of click on everything here if you've lost, right? And, and it'll tell you. It's kind of amazing. I love that. And this is actually used in dialogue in game as well. So if a word pops up that you maybe don't know, you can click on it and it'll tell you about that word. Now, there is a talent tree attached to this. And <laughs> the video is going to be a little weird. I'm going to have the feats mixed in here. So it's going to take a little bit of editing. So when I'm done talking now, the warrior tree will pop up. We're going to have a look at the warrior feats, the talent tree and then we'll move on to the next part so it might feel a little disjointed but i'm going to try and connect them all as well as i can right keep that in mind it's just going to be a strange way of doing it because of the character creation system not allowing you to really jump back and forth between the two uh, that's the easiest way of doing it so that's the arms master we're going to look at the talents of it now the feats and then we'll move on to battle mage after that arms master feats so the feats are derived from your class as you know and you get to distribute the DPs or developmental points into them to gain benefits and new abilities. It's a talent tree. In essence, you have to follow the arrows and you have to unlock the one ability to get the next ability, but every rank is locked behind a certain level as well. So you can start off on either side. Uh, for the arms master, we have arms mastery over here. It gives you, if you have one rank, melee accuracy a certain amount for every rank then three ranks you get ranged accuracy and six ranks you get precise strike which is an ability that has as you can see there four extra accuracy whenever something says maneuver then you know it's an ability that you can use it tells you how much the cooldown is and so on and so forth so you will just have to sort of keep that in mind as we go through here now we're going to look down this side first, then we'll look at the at the other side. This is sort of an all-round section, which covers everything. And this section, there's one for each weapon. So I'm not going to go too in-depth here, but I'm going to do what I can. Uh, first up, again, we have this Arms Master. And as you click it, you can see it unlocks all of these for you. And then as you put points in there, you can see you unlock this, the certain parts. And as it stands right now, you, you can only put in the first two rows. So if I take this, then I can put in one of these. And I won't be able to go further yet because this one requires uh, level 5, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 5. And then the final row requires uh, mastery. You need this one and then it's, it's, it's probably level 10 or something. like I don't know. It, it needs a little higher level. That said, let's have a peek, right? Archery Initiate. This is the archery tree. This one gives you for 1 rank bow accuracy, for 3 ranks bow damage, and then for 6 ranks rapid shot. It's a ranged attack. If successful, it makes another free attack. Then down here, we have Archery Expert. That gives more accuracy and more damage. And Fletching. 25% arrow recovery. It doubles the chance uh, of recovering a spent arrow after combat. It's pretty good. It's Well, it's, it's really good. It's important if you are an archer. And then the final level is Master. That gives you uh, Bow Finesse, which is crit chance with bows. More bow finesse, more crit chance, and rapid reload. If you score a critical hit with a bow, you immediately regain one attack. Uh, it basically, uh, you know, you, you just, you do the second attack immediately, instantly after you did the first one. That's the archery tree. Then we have axe, initiate, axe accuracy. And then at three, we have more accuracy, and then wild swing. An attack with four bonus damage. There you go. Then we have axe damage, axe damage, and rending blow. 
Critical hits with an axe cause injury conditions. This is a triggered ability. When you get a critical hit, it causes an injury. And finally, we have Axe Master that gives you finesse twice. That's the crit chance. And then decapitation. <laughs> Jeez. That's the triggered ability. The gruesomeness of your axe kill causes fear in all opponents who can see it. That's kind of amazing. All right. Next up, club initiate. This gives you club damage, club accuracy, and then stun in blow. It stuns an enemy when you uh, use the ability. Then in expert, we get club accuracy, club damage, and kneecap. This allows your critical hits to cause the injured leg condition, which uh, makes people move slower and they're unable to dodge. Club master gives you finesse, finesse. That's once again critical hit and shake the earth. That's a maneuver. It executes an attack that adds the condition stunned. And it's actually AOE as well, which is kind of important. Right. Next up, club initiate. We just did that, so we have shield initiate. Shield training, that gives you plus one shield use. Then you can use a shield properly. Uh, phalanx, that's a passive ability. While wielding a shield, you get a dodge bonus for adjacent allies. Uh, bonus is plus one per ally up to a maximum of the phalanx bonus. Then we have Shield Rush. This is a maneuver. Cooldown is only one turn. Perform an attack that pushes your opponent back one square if successful. Deals normal damage. It's pretty good. I, I enjoyed... I actually tried uh, Sword and Shield on my first run. And it was good. It was really, really fun. On Armors Master, because this was the recommended class. Expert. Shield Training. Phalanx. And Defend Ally. Targets any ally adjacent to the caster. Adds condition defending. That's, uh... Well. I don't, I don't really know where to see. Uh, it adds to their dodge attribute. Okay, there we go. I was about to say the status tag. I, d I didn't see it there, but yeah. It adds it adds to their dodge attribute, making them harder to hit. Right. Uh, then we have shield training again. Phalanx again and shield slam. Uh, let's have a look. Whilst wielding a shield, dodging a melee attack causes you to deal 1 to 4 blunt damage to your attacker. Very good, by the way, because this is triggered, and whenever you dodge, which you do a lot, well, yeah. Sword Initiate. Rank 1 is Blade Accuracy, then Blade Damage, then Thrust and Parry. Cooldown's 2 turns. Execute an attack. Add Condition Defending. Next up, Blade Damage, Blade Accuracy, and Deep Cut. Your critical hits using blades cause bleeding on your target. And then finally for short, uh, Sword Master, we have Blade Finesse, Blade Finesse, and Storm of Steel. This executes an attack that deals 1 to 6 damage slashing in an aura. So it's all enemies around you. Very cool. Then we have Two-Handed Initiate. Heavy Weapon Accuracy. That explains itself. Heavy Weapon Damage. And then more Heavy Weapon Damage. There's a slightly shorter tree here, which is kind of cool, actually. It makes it easier to spec into it as, like, a side hustle. Uh, then you have heavy weapon damage again, heavy weapon accuracy, and cleave. Uh, this is a triggered ability when you kill an opponent using a heavy melee weapon, restore one attack. So you can just go again and again and again and again. <laughs> it's kind of insane, actually. Uh, then we have bread for war. This is the second tree, and this is more of an all-round tree for all things Arms Master, right? So your first rank here gives you increased athletics, which, again, that's explaining itself. You, If you want to see more about athletics, then you'll just look at the attribute section of this video, and you'll see what that can do there. Uh, three ranks gives you increased toughness, that makes you tougher, and then it gives you second wind on six. Two-turn cooldown, it is a maneuver. Targets the character themselves, removing conditions with the tag bleeding, and it adds three to six healing. So that boosts your vitality by three to six, right? Then, we have Toughnet Initiate here and Calloused Hands. Uh, toughness, increased heavy armor use, increased heavy armor use, and increased heavy armor use. That very much explains itself. A toughness Expert is increased toughness, vitality, and strength. It's kind of nice, that's very strong. Then again, on Master, vitality, vitality, and not today. Triggered ability, the first time you would take hit point damage each combat, you automatically regain 30 to 40 vitality hit points. So, this is massive. It's like a cheat death ability, because whenever you take wound damage, you are essentially 
about to die. Like, that's bad, right? This will immediately boost you up, and you won't get hit by wound damage, which means you won't have any status uh, afflictions or anything like that. It's a big deal. It's really, really, really good. Callous Tans. One rank in Charger. That's a charge bonus. Uh, that's basically... Um, it allows you to move and hit, you know? So, it's, it's kind of a useful thing to have, I want to say. If a character is charging, this bonus is added on top of the base charge bonus. Uh, the charge bonus is added to the following attacks to hit and damage roll. Uh, you, you will, when you're playing with a melee character, you will notice that enemies tend to try and run away a lot. This makes it more useful, right? Then here's a smashing charge, a triggered ability. Your charges cause one to three additional blunt damage. Okay. Brutality. Ranks. On one, vicious. That's extra crit chance. General accuracy, that's to melee and ranged, and multi-attack. One extra attack per turn. Very, very strong as well. I mean, like, ridiculously strong. Bloodthirsty. Then you get more vicious, more brutal. This is melee damage, range damage, and unarmed bonus, and then critical strike. This is a maneuver that executes an attack that's always a crit when you use it. So, pretty fantastic. And that is that for the Arms Master feats. Battle Magos. <laughs> <laughs> the archetype is Magos. The Magos is a ranged striker that can cast powerful and often destructive spells. The Battle Magos is a Magos specialized in the destructive spells of fire magic. Unlike the Magi, uh, they also get access to a few basic combat related feats. Their main attribute is intellect. Stats. They may not wear armor. They can use light weapons of the type from blade, club, and bow. There you go. Pretty cool. The Battle Magos feats. These are actually quite interesting. The spellcasters are very different from the more martial classes. The way this works is you have your more active choices on the left side here with your arcane spellcasting tree. You put one point in here that activates spellcasting. Then you can pick how to specialize. Now, the character creation is set up in a way that will allow you to get two sets of spells at the start if you so desire or you can specialize more in one. So the idea is you have air magic over here, earth magic, and fire magic. And each of these, you need to put three ranks in, and that'll activate that tree, and you'll get to pick two spells as you click continue here. So as you're done, you'll pick two spells. Now, I'm not gonna show you what that picking looks like. It's pretty straightforward. You just click the, the little button. It doesn't really give you a description of the spells, but for air magic, you get Mark of Blurring, Magic Missile, and Steel Breath. For Earth Magic, you get Arcane Shockwave, Mark of Lethargy, Summon Vermin, and Swarm of Gnats. Those are your choices. And for Fire Magic, you get Flaming Fists and Mark of Illumination. Those are your choices for those spells. Then, as you keep progressing, you will get more. Now, because I'm giving you the character creation experience here, I will say that you don't get to specialize far enough here to get the next rank of spell but on your first level when you're playing you will be able to pick your next spell over here here or here if you specialize in those right every point that you put in there gives you more focus and it makes your spells of that tree stronger and then you will notice down here that fire magic goes a little further than the other two right so there are more spells to get here, and you can get more powerful on them. The actual points that you spend in them, they don't really have much to talk about. You can just see how far they go down, and each of them, again, as you fill out those little blocks on the side there, and you, and you max them, you get more spell slots and more spells to cast. So that's how this tree works over here. The other trees are more general. This is the Reticular Discipline, or Reticular Disciple, rather. This gives you increased spell casting aptitude for one rank. Then for three ranks, you get increased lore. And then for six ranks, you get spell burn. That's a maneuver. Uh, targets the character themselves, dealing one to four magical damage. Uh, it's fire type. And then it restores three to six attunement. So you do damage to yourself and you get mana back, basically. Attunement in this case. Okay. Then down here, we have arcane discipline. This gives you increased will on one rank. On three ranks, you get increased attunement and then increased initiative on six ranks. And as we go down here, more attunement, more will, more intellect. It's, as you can see, similar to the uh, Arms Master ones. 
where it sort of it gives you a predictable set of stats and attributes uh, then down here on master we get increased will attunement and dodge and finally increased attunement will and intellect there you go and we have arcane student initiate increased attunement law and resistance to lightning increased spell aptitude toughness and resistance to acid increased law spell aptitude and resistance to fire and finally increased spell aptitude increased attunement and i'm not sure why there's nothing down here i'm not sure if that's a bug or if it's perhaps just not there yeah i don't know moving on <laughs> light weapon initiate this is if you desperately need to do something other than spell casting sometimes it does happen i've played a little bit on a spell caster and you you probably want a little bit in terms of the weapons but i mean like usually what i do is i just let the other characters in the party handle it it's not that big a deal i don't know i liked to specialize so i like to go like hard on a certain school of magic uh, it felt better to me if i was going to go for a spell caster anyway uh then one rank is weapon finesse that gives you extra crit and then weapon accuracy when you have three ranks you can only put three in there uh, then weapon expert gives you piercing damage and accuracy and then you can split off between blade or ranged uh, which is kind of cool. I like the ranged more bows bow to me makes more sense just because you can stay back uh, Then on the blades you can get accuracy finesse or thrust and parry. That's a maneuver We saw that on the arms master uh, Execute an attack and it adds the condition defending which basically allows you to dodge the next attack that comes at you Then range weapon that's bow accuracy bow finesse and fletching. That's a passive ability uh, and lets you pick up more arrows Yeah that's it. As I mentioned before, uh, you only get the choices between these few spells at the start, but you very very quickly after that get more spells and pick up more that you can use. Keep that in mind. Next up is the Champion. The Champion's archetype is, funny enough, a Cleric. They offer close-range support to their party through close-range buffs and restorative spells. It's obviously the more combat-oriented Cleric. Uh, and I th I'm guessing the Hospitaller will be the more support-oriented one. It's sort of like you could see it as a Paladin, you know? It's a Cleric who excels in the use of blades and armor while still having limited divine spellcasting abilities. Main attribute is Presence. They can use all armor and blade and clubs. Champion Feats. Religious Training is their first tree. This offers you Imperial Litany, which targets the character themselves and adds fortified will and it removes fearful or panicked if you have it then you can get resilience initiate uh, that adds increased medium armor use medium armor use and medium armor use then uh, on expert you get vitality will and toughness and on master you get toughness vitality and will it's just an all-round good tanky tree then you have faithful initiate which is increased healing increased attunement and increased spell aptitude expert gives you increased diplomacy attunement and presence and finally master gives you law attunement and aura radius kind of important that last one's like really big then if you don't want the passives if you're going for a more active start then you can go for your divine spell casting over here again we'll see this sort of bleed over onto other classes because this is just the divine spell casting school uh, for this you have body magic mind magic and spirit magic now it works the same way as the spellcasters do where you need to spend three points in here as you can see then you'll unlock two spells to start with from that school so at the start here you can start with two different schools on three so you can have a total of four spells to start the spells that you will have as choices for these two trees or well, at least these three trees are for mind uh, we have no for body magic we have cure moderate poison minor lay on hands then for mind there's clear senses fortify awareness fortify will and instill courage again these are active spells that you can cast then for spirit magic there's actually a lot there's blessing touch mark of heroism hammer of light holy light mind blast and touch of condemnation lots of different spells to choose from there it's a fun school to go for if you want to go for something here uh, and then as you go further in you get to learn more spells from those schools so that's how this tree works then we have arms mastery which is very much exactly the same as what the arms master had uh, except it's a little more limited here you have shield initiate which gives you shield training phalanx 
Uh, that's basically going to give you extra dodge when you're standing next to your party members. And shield rush, which is a maneuver, and it allows you to push players, well, the opponent, back one square, and it deals decent damage to them. Then on expert, you get shield training, phalanx, and defend ally. Uh, this one allows you to add defend into your ally. It gives them extra dodge. It allows them to dodge attacks. You'd want to do that if you're right next to them anyway. Uh, then you have on master, shield training, phalanx, and shield slam. While using a shield, dodging a melee attack causes you to deal 1 to 4 blunt damage to your attacker. That's very cool. Very strong. Then we have sword initiate. Uh, this gives you blade accuracy, blade damage, and thrust and parry. Thrust and parry allows you to do an attack and then add dodge to yourself for the next attack that comes your way. Shield ex uh, sword expert is blade damage, blade accuracy, and deep cut. This just allows your crits to do bleed in. Sword master is blade finesse, blade finesse, and storm of steel. You execute an attack, and then it does extra 1 to 6 slashing damage to anyone around you. Very cool. It's, it, it's, it's very nice, especially if you increase your aura, aura radius over here. So <laughs> it's kind of weird how those things work together, but um, when your auras are bigger, you do more damage uh, in a bigger area with Storm of Steel. Then finally, we have two-handed initiative over here. Uh, heavy weapon accuracy, heavy weapon damage, heavy weapon damage, and then finally damage accuracy and then the ability cleave which is triggered now when you kill an opponent with a heavy weapon it restores one attack and then you can just attack again so that's it that's the champion feats guild magos this is another magos guild magos is a spell cast who can develop all the different arcane spell schools fully this comes at the cost of having absolutely no combat related feats so they're pure casters may not attribute is obviously intellect they can't wear armor, light weapons, blade, club, and bow. There you go. I'm assuming club includes stuff like staves as well. Guild Magos Feats. This is basically a more specialized spellcaster where spellcasting is all that they do. You will notice that the tree goes deeper down, you get to learn more spells, and you do not get to specialize even a little bit in martial weaponry. So you just cast in spells. That's it. Probably better if you want to go for a spellcaster to just go for a spellcaster. Uh, but the way this tree works, in case you skipped here, is you put points in spellcasting, and then as you put points in these three different trees, there's air magic, earth magic, and fire magic, you unlock spells. It says here you put three ranks in, then you get two new spells, then you put three, uh, well, four ranks in this one, and then you get one more spell, then it's five ranks in that one to get one more spell, and six ranks to get one more spell, and every time you put the ranks in there, your spells get stronger. All right right so a magic gives you at the start right here at least your initial choices are mark of blurring magic missile and steel breath if magic will give you arcane shockwave mark of lethargy summon vermin and swarm of gnats and finally fire magic gives you flaming fists or mark of illumination you get to pick two of any of those so for fire magic you'll be able to start with both the abilities that they give you again you keep spending points here you keep unlocking spells they keep getting stronger that's the deal. Over here we have the passive extras. Well, they're not all passive, but the extras for spellcasting in general. That's the uh, Reticular Disciple ability tree. Same one we saw on the... Was it the champion? I'm not sure if it was the champion, but uh, we've seen it before. No, we saw it on the other spellcaster. Right. So, basically this gives you... On one rank, increased spell aptitude, then increased law, and then spell burn. This allows you to burn some vitality to give you extra mana, basically. Then you can go down the arcane discipline initiate or arcane student initiate. Discipline gives you increased will, attunement, and initiative. Then as you level it, attunement, will, and intellect. Will, attunement, and dodge. And finally down here, attunement, will, and intellect. Very good passive tree. Like, it gives you so much strong stuff uh, for student. You get increased attunement, law, and resistance to lightning. Then spell aptitude, toughness, and resistance to acid. Law, spell aptitude, resistance to fire. And finally, spell aptitude, increased attunement. And this one, for whatever reason, is blank. I don't know. And that's it. Very, very good tree if you want to go for, like, solid, straight-up spell casting. Hierophant is a cleric. It's a cleric who can develop all the different divine spell schools fully. This comes at the cost of having no combat-related feats. Main attribute for this class is Presence. They may wear light armor, 
they can use light and medium weapons of the club type. Hierophant feats. This is once again taking two of the different trees that we've seen already and throwing them together. Here we have religious training and divine spell casting. So unlike the champion, there's no martial weaponry tree in here. So your focus is much more on the spell casting, on the healing, and on the supportive stuff. You'll see as we go through here. And that makes that your talent trees are deeper and you can specialize more so than something like the champion could. Uh, the religious training, uh, when you put points in here, you will see you get increased medium armor usage from resilience initiate. Uh, then from expert you get vitality will and toughness this is all tanking stuff then toughness vitality and will then with faithful initiate you get increased healing this is so this is the the tanky tree or at least the tanky line and this is the supportive line this gives you increased healing increased mana uh, increased spell aptitude then diplomacy attunement and presence law attunement and aura radius and you can see it goes one step further here which gives you and this is one step further than the champion had increased attunement spell aptitude and even more increased aura radius so they can have really powerful and and vast auras then for the spell casting uh, you get to specialize in body magic mind magic or spirit magic the way this tree works much like the other ones is you spend points in here and if you spend three points in this one then you unlock two spells from this tier and then you can spend four points in the next one that'll give you one spell from that tier five ranks there one spell there and so on so you can keep going down the one tree if you want that one tree or you can spread your abilities around a little bit and get multiple trees at character creation here the most you can get is two different trees which means four different spells and it's quite a good selection to be honest it's not bad for body magic your choices are cure moderate poison and minor lay on hands for mind magic you have clear senses fortify awareness fortify will and instill courage and for spirit magic, you have a big list, which is Blessing, Touch, Mark of Heroism, Hammer of Light, Holy Light, Mind Blast, and Touch of Condemnation. So you can, with those choices, uh, you can also pick if you want to go for like a supportive build or a damagey build or anything like that. And again, every time you go down, you get to unlock more spells. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty fantastic. I don't have the full spell list for you. I'm just covering what's actually available in character creation. Then we have the Hospitaller. It's a cleric who serves as a frontline healer, well armed and armored. They can stand their ground against overwhelming forces while also getting access to the highest tiers of body magic school. Their main attribute for this class is presence. They can wear light and medium armor and they can use light and medium weapons of the club type. Lots of club wielders here. Hospital of Feats. These guys have religious training, divine spell casting, and cleric weapons initiate. For the religious training, you basically get Imperial Litany over here. This targets your character, it gives them fortified will, and it removes fear and panic. Uh, it's it's a, good, a good supportive ability, it really isn't bad to have. Uh, then you can specialize in resilience or faith. It sort of explains itself, but let's go through the list here. Resilience is basically your tank. A tree it'll give you increased armor use for medium as you can see there on all three ranks then vitality will and toughness and then toughness vitality and will basically just makes you stronger for faith you get increased healing increased attunement which is your mana and increased spell aptitude then you get diplomacy attunement and presence and then you get law attunement and aura you can see that they are not as deep the trees here uh, as an example on the previous class we looked at the trees went one further and you got even more aura radius uh, which is cool but on this one you get a few different things that you didn't have on that so it's it's always like it's a choice you make and you drop in some stuff and you get in some other new stuff instead uh, then divine spell casting the way this works is you activate divine spell casting then you pick your school here you've got body magic mind magic or spirit magic each of them gives you different spells from that school if you spend three points in each of them or in any of them then you unlock for those three points in the first tree you unlock two spells from that tier then if you spend four points over here you unlock another spell from that tier and so on and so forth you can see that they actually specialize in body magic because they get two extra tiers down this way uh, that's where they would be excelling compared to the other uh, support casters in the game 
Body magic gives you a choice of cure moderate poison and minor lay on hands. Its focus is mostly healing. Uh, that's the f you'll get only those two abilities right here in character creation. You'll unlock more later. Mind magic gives you clear senses, fortify awareness, fortify will, and instill courage. That's more buffs and uh, sort of debuff curing and stuff like that. And then spirit magic gives you blessing touch, uh, mark of heroism, hammer of light, holy light, mind blast, and touch of condemnation. Again, you can see that they can't specialize as far down in these two, so I guess it would make sense to go for body magic. And as you go down the tree, you unlock more spells. Then finally, they have Cleric Weapons Initiate. This, as you expect, gives you sort of one-handed and shield training. They get shield training there, which allows them to use shields. Then Phalanx, which gives you a bonus if you're standing next to allies. And then the Defend Ally ability, which allows you to defend the ally and give them dodge. Then you get club accuracy, club damage, and stunning blow. Stunning blow is a good maneuver. It stuns someone. Quite useful. Then you have phalanx, shield training, and shield rush. This one also explains itself. It rushes a, a character, and you can push them back. And then finally, Grandmaster gives you club accuracy, club damage, and shake the earth. That is a stun aura. Very good if you combine it with the uh, increased aura radius. Very cool. Then we have the Officer. Officer is a skilled warrior who serves as a force multiplier through their tactical skills. Issuing orders across the battlefield, they vastly improve the performance of their fellow party members. They use strength as their main attribute, and uh, they can use any armor. They can use blades, axes, clubs, and bows. Pretty fantastic. Officer Feats. So these guys get Arms Mastery, Bread for War, and Leadership Initiate as their trees. Arms Mastery, we know from previous classes, uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's obviously quite strong <laughs> when you're using these weapons. And you can see that it's less than the Arms Master. The Arms Master had like six different weapons. These guys only have three, which makes sense, once again, because uh, the Arms Master is the one that specializes in using all the different weapons. This gives you for one rank melee accuracy, then for three ranged accuracy, and then precise strike, which lets you execute an attack with extra accuracy. Then we have Axe, Shield, and Sword. For Axe, you get Axe Accuracy, Accuracy, and Wild Swing. This lets you do an attack with extra damage. Then Damage, Damage, and Rend in Blow. This lets your uh, critical hits do injuries. Then you have Finesse, Finesse, and Decapitation, which is just an awesome ability. The gruesomeness of your Axe kill causes fear in all opponents who can see it. I mean, why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> then Shield Initiate. For one rank, it gives you Shield Training plus one shield use, makes you better at using shields. Uh, for three ranks, you get Phalanx, which basically gives you extra dodge when you're standing nearby allies. And then you get Shield Rush, which performs an attack that pushes your opponent back one square if successful. It rushes towards them and pushes them back, basically. Uh, then you get Shield Training, Phalanx, and Defend Ally. That gives one of your allies the Defend status, which allows them to dodge attacks. Shield Training, Phalanx, and Shield Slam. This one, when you hold in the shield, uh, whenever you dodge an attack, it causes you to slam them with your shield doing the extra damage. That adds up very quickly. Then we have Sword Initiate, which gives you blade accuracy, blade damage, and thrust and parry. This one lets you do an attack, and then it lets you dodge the next attack that comes your way. Then we have Sword Expert, which is blade damage, accuracy, and deep cut. Your crits cause bleeding. Very cool as well. Then Blade Finesse, Blade Finesse, and Storm of Steel. Sorry, Blade Finesse, if you didn't know, is crit damage. Uh, Storm of Steel is a whirlwind attack in an aura around you, 1 to 6 damage. Very cool. Then we have Bread for War. This is the passive tree, basically. Super duper strong. The warrior style classes have this. Uh, what it gives you for the base ability is increased athletics, toughness, and second wind. Second wind basically removes bleeding and it heals you for a certain amount. Then there's toughness initiate and calloused hands. For toughness, you get increased heavy armor usage on all three. Toughness, vitality, and strength. Vitality, vitality, and not today. Not today is basically a cheat death. For the first time, each combat that you would take wound damage, which is the proper serious damage. When they've worked through your vitality, basically, then you take wound damage. This will heal you for 30 to 40 vitality points. It's very strong. Calloused hands. This gives you plus one rank in charger. It gives you a charge bonus, so your charges are more effective more charger and then smash in charge so you deal one to three additional blunt damage when you charge brutality this gives you vicious which is crit chance accuracy 
and multi-attack. This just gives you straight up one extra attack. Vicious, brutal. Again, this gives you melee damage bonus, range damage bonus, and unarmed damage bonus. And then critical strike. This lets you do an attack that is a guaranteed crit. Then the tree that makes the officer the officer. It's the leadership initiate tree. This gives you diplomacy, inspiring kill. That's when killing an opponent in armed or unarmed melee combat, all allies who witness the kill get inspired for one turn. This gives them extra hit chance. Pretty good. And then forwards. Targets all allies on the battlefield. Adds condition lesser haste and inspired. This gives you plus two movement. That's quite a lot of movement, by the way. And inspired, as you saw, gives you extra hit chance. Very, very strong. Very cool. So if you can make yourself quite strong and an imposing force, then you can just buff all your allies up in the process. It's really cool. Rank two here. This gives you diplomacy, uh, increased initiative, and stand your ground. Uh, that's a maneuver. So target all allies on the battlefield. It adds defending, which lets them dodge attacks. Leadership master gives you initiative, melee accuracy, and regroup. So you'll notice that the officer has a lot of active abilities. Far less passive, far more active. All allies, they remove conditions fearful and panicked. Quite useful as well. And then on the final rank, diplomacy, accuracy, and attack. That just gives everyone frenzy. That's one extra attack. Very strong. Once again, if you stack that with all the other passives, super good. Then the ranger. Once again, a warrior. The ranger is a warrior specializing in ranged combat with access to limited nature magic. The main attribute is presence. They can use any armor and then all weapons from blade, axe, club, and bow. Ranger feats. So the ranger is an interesting mix once again. It has some arms mastery trees, bread for war, nature spell casting, and its own ranger tree. So it's actually got a whole lot going for it and it specializes in a lot of different stuff which makes it pretty useful. So for arms mastery, uh, you get basically to unlock archery initiate, axe initiate, or sword initiate. Uh, the basic arms master skill gives you melee accuracy, ranged accuracy, and precise strike. Precise strike is a maneuver that lets you do an attack with extra accuracy. Uh, then if you move down, archery. This gives you bow accuracy, bow damage, or rapid shot. Rapid shot uh, allows you to make a ranged attack, and if it hits, then you can shoot another free attack, which is kind of cool. Then we have bow accuracy, bow damage, and fletching. This lets you pick up more arrows that you've shot. Then bow finesse, bow finesse, and rapid reload. If you score a critical hit with a bow, you immediately regain one attack. So you're basically doing another free attack after that. Super strong. Super, super, super strong. Axe initiate. This gives you axe accuracy, axe accuracy, and wild swing. This is an attack with four bonus damage. Axe expert gives you axe damage, axe damage, and rending blow, which is... Uh, your critical hits with axes cause injury conditions, which is also very powerful. Then you get Axe Finesse, Finesse, and Decapitation, which is whenever you kill someone, it causes fear in anyone who sees the kill. Quite cool. <laughs> Quite cool. Then Sword Initiate. This gives you Blade Accuracy, Blade Damage, and Thrust and Parry. This lets you do an attack and then dodge the next attack that comes your way. Sword Expert. Blade Damage, Blade Accuracy, and Deep Cut. All your crits do bleeding damage on the target. And then finally, we have Swordmaster here, which is Blade Finesse, Blade Finesse, and Storm of Steel, which is a whirlwind attack that does 1 to 6 damage in an aura around you. Then, Bread for War. This is a very, very, very strong passive tree. Increased athletics, increased toughness, and then for 6 points, you get Second Wind, which removes bleeding and heals you. You can just use it as a heal as well, which is kind of cool. Toughness Initiate and uh, Callous Tans. Toughness Initiate gives you Heavy Armor, Heavy Armor, Heavy Armor. Uh, increased Toughness, Vitality, and Strength. And then finally, Vitality, Vitality, and Not Today. This is a Cheat Death ability that whenever you would take Fatal Damage or at least Wound Damage for the first time, instead you are healed and you're right back on your feet. Callous Tans gives you Charger, Charger, and Smashing Charge. This makes your charges more effective, basically. Uh, it just makes them better. And um, if we go on to the next one over here, Smashing Charge gives you a additional 1 to 3 blunt damage on your charge. Then you get Vicious, General accur Accuracy, and Multi-Attack, which is literally just a passive extra attack per turn. Vicious, Brutal, and Critical Strike. This allows you to do an attack that's a guaranteed crit, which is also just very strong. 
Then, nature spell casting. You gain the ability to learn spells from the nature school. This is the first time we see nature spell casting. Uh, you put one point in there to activate spell casting. Then if you put three points in here, you get to learn two spells from the nature magic tier. Uh, then you put four more points in there. Then you get another spell. And then you get another spell after that. That's how it works. The spell choices when you start out are bark skin, cure moderate poison, fortify awareness, and major lay on, uh, minor lay on hands. Not major. The way it works is it's actually taking spells from all the different schools that are out there. So... You will see spells here from body, spirit, and mind. It's a nice mix. It actually gives you, once again, a really good all-round character because it has little bits and pieces from all the other schools. So those are the spells that you start with, and as you level up more, you will get to pick more spells. Finally, we have Ranger Initiate. This gives you Mark Target. It's a maneuver, and it only has a one-turn cooldown, which is kind of cool. The target gets marked which confers a minus two penalty to dodge for the rest of the encounter. So every turn you can put marked on someone and then they take hits way more easily. Survival increased and then magnificent takedown. This is a triggered ability. When killing a marked target, all allies who witness the kill get inspired for one turn. This gives them extra hit chance. Ranger expert, survival increase, ranged accuracy and point blank shot. This basically just allows you to use melee in point-blank range, which otherwise you can't do. Ranger Master is increased stealth evasive, which disengages you from melee uh, much more safely. Uh, because usually if you had jumped back from another character, then they would get that attack of opportunity and they would, you know, your turn would just end. Then you have Replenishing Takedown. Killing the marked target heals the party a small amount. Very, very cool passive ability as well. Very nice. And that's it for the Ranger feats. Then finally we have Thief. This is a rogue. The rogue archetype combines important non-combat skills with large damage output against single targets. The important non-combat skills are a pretty big deal. The Thief is a rogue who uses stealth to set up devastating backstab attacks. The main attribute for this class is agility. They can use light armor, and they can use medium weapons of the blade, axe, club, and bow types. Our final feat tree, the thief. Pretty interesting stuff here. They have tradecraft, light weapons, and thievery. For tradecraft, you get backstabber. That kind of explains itself, but I'll just go into a little bit more detail here. It allows you to perform backstabs on flanked or vulnerable characters, and then that allows you to add your backstab damage bonus to your attack, which, by the way, is a lot, because it, it adds up super duper quickly. That's for three ranks, you get those two. Then for four ranks, you get increased movement, which is just one extra movement. Then you get increased backstab damage. Each time you see this, you get two extra damage. Again, it adds up a lot. Then you can specialize in backstab, mobility, or survivor. For backstab, you get backstab damage, backstab damage, and hamstring. This is a maneuver that basically cripples the opponent and makes them move slower. It's, it's just going to give them minus two movement. Expert allows you to have more backstab damage, more backstab damage, and vein strike, which is similar to the previous one, but it's instead bleeding. Then we have backstab master, which is once again damage, damage, and crippling finesse. This is insane. When you score a backstab hit using a light weapon, the target gets a random injury condition, which can be literally anything, and it can be so powerful. Then for mobility, we get increased initiative, increased athletics, and evasive. Uh, which allows you to disengage from combat without ending your turn. Then there's increased initiative, movement, and fancy footwork, which allows you to swap places with your allies without ending your turn. This one gives you an in initiative, athletics, and dash. This gives your character lesser haste, which is just two extra movement. Pretty cool. Then survivor initiate gives you light armor, light armor, and critical resistance. Toughness, Dodge, and Critical Resistance, and finally Will, Critical Resistance, and Weaving Blade. Whenever you dodge an attack and you have a weapon equipped, then you can do a bit of slashing damage extra for free. Light Weapons Initiate. This gives you Light Weapon Finesse, which is Critical Chance, Light Weapon Accuracy, and Precise Strike. That lets you do an attack with extra accuracy. Then, Expert is four extra, uh, extra piercing damage. That's one extra piercing damage bonus. Light Weapon Accuracy, and pierce armor. This is a actual active maneuver that lets you do a light attack that is armor piercing, which sort of ignores the armor. 
Then you can specialize in Rogue Blade Initiate or Rogue Ranged Initiate. So you can go for the bow or for you know, daggers or swords or whatever. Uh, this gives you blade accuracy, blade finesse, and thrust and parry. Thrust and parry makes you do an attack and then you dodge the next attack that comes your way. Blade Expert is blade damage, blade finesse, which is the crit, crit chance, and red arcs. This is a triggered ability. When you score a critical hit with a light blade, it causes you to restore one attack. So you basically just keep going like that if you get lucky. Ranged initiative gives you bow accuracy, bow finesse, and fletching, which lets you get extra arrows back. Then bow damage, bow finesse, and rapid reload. So whenever you score a critical hit, you get that attack back. Finally, we have the thievery initiate tree. This gives you increased thievery. That's the uh, extra ability that we've, well, at this point, we haven't looked at it yet, but you will see it when we get there. Uh, this gives you increased stealth and hide in combat, which is super useful, by the way. It allows you to do backstabs more effectively in the middle of fights, so you don't have to initiate with the backstab every time. Uh, this gives you basically the ability to vanish and then do backstabs again. Very strong. Increased stealth, increased thievery and hidden deployment. You can start your fight when you deploy your team hidden. Once again, very useful. Increased thievery, increased stealth, and smoke bomb. So the first time you're wounded each combat, you automatically hide. Again, allowing you to backstab. So this whole thief feat tree and the thief, thief playstyle in general is very active and it's very cool on your main character because it allows you to do a whole bunch of extra stuff when you're in the open world and it allows you to have a lot of fun, active fun in combat. So it's a very cool and fun class for sure. And that's it. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna grab the arms master. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be sort of brushing over the feet section, seeing that I've covered it all already. Uh, and then we're gonna jump on through to the next section. Here we go. Background for your character. Backgrounds add points in skills, influence, starting conditions, and narrative content. So much like, again, I like to refer to Baldur's Gate because funny enough, it's one of the closest comparisons that we have to something like this. But much like Baldur's Gate, you get more than just stats out of these. So you will have certain options unlock based on which background you pick. Uh, you will have a different view of the world, you know? And you can sort of see most of that as we jump through here and as we go through these. Also an important choice because they can give you a lot of pretty game-changing stats. Acolyte. You claim a connection with the divine that goes far deeper than most. Whether legitimate or not, you're always ready to dispense holy wisdom, be it imperial gospel or the profane ramblings of the heretic. This gives you plus three attunement and plus one law. You will see what these are once we jump in. So I'm not going to explain what exactly attunement and law are right now. When we get to attributes, you'll see them there. Uh, just know what they give you. Courtier, you spend most of your time kissing noble asses. And it's made you a master of navigating the cutthroat politics of the Imperial Lay Courts. You get extra awareness and diplomacy. Criminal. You are an esteemed member of the Empire's team in Underworld with a special knack for getting in and out of places you shouldn't be. This gives you stealth and thievery. I want to mention as we are going through here that a lot of this stuff is very much optional and it has, much like other modern RPGs, a system where there are usually many ways of approaching every situation. You don't need to have stealth, you don't need to have lockpicking, you don't need to be good at talking. You can approach it in whichever way makes sense at the time. Ex Legionary, a member of the old breed, forged and tempered by the hardships of soldiering. You now belong to the ever growing fraternity of fellow men and women with scarred bodies and broken minds who roam the Empire in search for a quiet place. A piece of land to call home. 30 pounds carrying bonus. That's pretty cool. Uh, very useful, by the way, but eh, I don't know. I, I, I personally prefer the, the, the combat ones or the ones that give you sort of boosts in other areas. Fortune's full. This is a deluxe edition class. You have unnaturally good luck and seem to find much more gold than others after combat. <laughs> this may sound like a big deal, but you actually forfeit a lot of power in certain situations to get something like this. Uh, I saw someone already saying, oh no, pay to win. <laughs> Man, it, it's really not. <laughs> it's really not. Uh, there's a whole lot of other good stuff here, uh, but yeah, that's fortune's full. Gilda, 
Like so many of the empires, young and promising, you were recruited into a guild. Oh, and by the way, I just want to say the gold is like, there's so much of it going around. You don't need more. It doesn't really give you any power. Like so many of the empires, young and promising, you were recruited into guild service at a fairly early age. As the saying goes, work for the illustrious guilds tend to leave you with a gold in your purse and blood on your hands. That's crafting and diplomacy. Then noble. An individual of old blood, you learned long ago that wealth and connections tend to open doors that were otherwise closed to the filthy masses. That's diplomacy and law. Sailor, you heard the call of the mother of maelstroms and salt water now runs in your veins. Whether on the deck of a gilder, caravel, or man in the sails of a meager fishing sloop, you feel most at home when you're at sea. That's athletics and crafting. Savant, this is another deluxe edition class. You're a very fast learner and advance more rapidly through levels. 10% experience bonus. It's a very small experience bonus. <laughs> I, again, I don't know if that's really worth it. Uh, Scout, deluxe edition class. You're remarkably fleet of foot. This gives you plus one movement. Um, see, that might be useful, but one movement is literally just one square of movement. It's one tile, basically, which is tiny in this game. Uh, so it's okay. It's okay. It's just another class. It's not better or worse than the other ones. Salsword. With the once mighty legions of the Empire in decline, this is an age of salswords and mercenaries. There's no shortage of those willing to pay professionals to wreak violence on others, and you are very good at your job. This is a really good one. Athletics and Vitality. There are so many athletics checks, especially early on, and Vitality, that's how you stay alive, man. That's how you stay alive. This is a really good one. Street Rat. Spending your formative years fending for yourself on the hard streets of the Empire's sprawling cities has left you with a preternatural instinct for surviving. No crime is too petty, no meat too mysterious. <laughs> That's initiative and thievery. Thug. Punch first, ask questions later. You've perfected the noble art of solving problems with brute force. You get extra club damage bonus. Vagabond. Having spent most of your teenage years on the road, you are free a free spirit with no allegiance to any one person or place. Drifting from place to place, you go where there is work, food, and a warm bed to be had. Crafting and survival. And then finally, wildling. As the light of civilization fades, the vast wilderness of the empire encroach on the civilized folk. Thankfully, you don't count yourself among those. The sky is your temple and the howling of wolves your litany. That's stealth and survival. So this is actually a really tough choice. I have a few favorites here. I really, really, really think that Cell Sword is incredibly strong. Uh, the the Fortune's Full loot bonus. I, I initially I thought it was kind of great, but then when I actually played the game, I felt like it wasn't all that powerful. Uh, I personally like the, the 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 choices that give you some out of combat bonuses as well the diplomacy and law stuff is really fun to have and definitely the which one was it that gave you initiative and thievery is kind of fun as well it's really cool uh, stealth is also kind of great stealth and thievery is fun but man it depends on the play style that you're going for it really does and the nice thing is that you don't have to build your character in any certain way in any specific way to have it work in this game because you can build it how you feel you want it at the time and then you can just sculpt or mold your other party members into what you are missing so again don't be too stressed out by these choices just pick what feels right to you uh, for the purposes of this we will take uh, let's take as i mentioned before the cell sword then we'll move on attribute points you have primary attributes and skills big choices here and again as I've mentioned many times, important stuff that you should probably read through and pay attention to. So, agility is a measure of your hand-eye coordination, nimbleness, and dexterity. Then you can see over here, it influences stealth, thievery, crit, initiative, ranged to hit, and dodge. So each of the stats is gonna have like a, a load of stuff or a load of importance attached to it. And every point that you put in here, you can actually see your stats go up, which is amazing. It's really, really cool. Uh, fortitude. It's 
how tough and resilient your character is. This is vitality, wounds, survival, and toughness. You'll see in just a minute what those other abilities are down here. Uh, intellect, mental acuity, recall, and analytical skill. This influences crafting and lore. And obviously, if you put the points here, you will also be better at spell casting and stuff like that. Uh, if it's your primary attribute, you want to go for it. Presence is your character's ability to read and react to the surrounding environment and people. This is sort of like a mix of... It's, it's interesting because it's a mix of like perception but also charisma, basically. Right? It's an interesting stat, to be sure. It affects awareness, diplomacy, healing, and willpower. Then we have strength, which is a measure of your character's brawn and physical power. This is athletics, melee damage, and melee to hit. And this obviously gives you... Well... A lot of extra damage if it is your uh, if it is your main stat so now we're gonna move on to the skills down here athletics this is used to jump climb swim and sprint this also counts encumbrance from armor so the more you have here the more or bigger sets of armor you can equip without feeling the the, the weight on your character very important and I will again say, like, early on in the game, I've noticed that there have been a lot of of these checks, right? There have been a lot of them. Like, a lot. Uh, so it's a useful one to have. Uh, you also can see that you get, you, it tells you here where you get in them from. So every time you put something in strength, as an example, then you get more in athletics. Uh, and the abilities and the skills and stuff, they sort of interact with one another. Awareness is your ability to notice small details and hidden things. Pretty cool as well. I really like awareness, especially on my main character. Uh, from what I've played, and I have played quite a decent amount, you can easily miss secret areas. It's got a very old school system with the secret areas where they are pretty secret in many situations. So awareness is a very nice one to have. Uh, and you can also see it counts encumbrance from headwear. And if you if you pop a bunch of points in here, uh, it, 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 it'll, you'll feel the difference. It'll help. Crafting. It's used when creating items at crafting stations. I must admit, I haven't done much crafting. I haven't, but it does seem like it's kind of fun. I mostly made food. That's the main thing that I crafted. Diplomacy is used to lie, bargain, or sway others in negotiations. It influences prices at merchants. That's pretty self-explanatory. Healing. It's used in camp to increase the rate of which... Uh, wounds at which wounds recover for wounded characters it also influences the amount of vitality regained from healing potions and is used in dialogue tests when dealing with medical issues and such funny they say that here but there are others that sort of affect that as well as an example awareness uh, can also pop up in conversations but healing yeah it's pretty important man i i it's quite a tough game and I, <laughs> I must tell you, I suffered a little bit early on from, from uh, not having enough healing items and stuff like that. Law, general knowledge skill. That's, that's it. It, it. There's a lot attached to this. There are a lot of checks that pop up, uh, law checks that pop up that tell you more about the game, about your surroundings, about characters and stuff like that. It's a cool skill. Stealth is used during adventuring in particular to determine if NPCs notice the party as it moves around. The cool thing about stealth is that it's an ability that your one character can have very high and all the other characters can sort of just tag along so if your main character has high stealth then you can stealth the entire party and they all move around with you there and that's kind of fantastic kind of fantastic it's a really cool skill as well stealth in this game is fun survival it's used to forage for food navigate difficult overland terrain and also determine a character's general knowledge of nature also self-explanatory and then finally thievery used to pick locks and pockets as well as steal from shops don't don't do that too often if you're not good at thievery <laughs> little 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 bit of advice from me to you i i'm not saying it ended badly for me i'm just saying watch out <laughs> and that's it so uh, we we made an arms master so for the purposes of this let's put some in uh, fortitude and some in strength let's put a bunch in athletics and then let's go for some in awareness right that's a good that's a good sort of um starting point now the other stuff here it all very much explains itself uh crit chance is your chance to crit initiative is who goes first in combat it's also kind of important uh, melee damage melee to hit range to hit you know all of that stuff dodge toughness willpower uh, this is much like other rpgs it's how you 
basically withstand mind affecting conditions uh, the one that you might not know is vitality is your health points wounds is your character's sort of core uh, it, it's like if your wounds are, are dire you die <laughs> vitality is your health and then you to start taking wound damage and every time you take wound damage uh, it's much more difficult to recover from that it actually gives you debuffs and afflictions and stuff like that so important and then finally attunement is your magical energy it determines how many spells can be cast and it refills every time you rest right right now we're gonna move on this is the feet tree i have shown this off in great detail already each class has their own feet tree they are mixed and matched as i've shown you with all the classes uh, so some of them have different parts uh, that are from other classes and they sort of combine them to make up every class that you can pick but we're going to move on from here and i will just say if you wanted to look at the feed trees then look at every every class uh, i've put timestamps in the video each class has their own feed, feed tree attached to it and you can check it out there next up next up let's spend our points here quickly in archery of course because why not let's do the appearance this is the cosmetic section, and this is actually my favorite part. I mean, I'm saying that now, and like, God, I just had so much fun looking at all the other options, but I still really love what they've done here. Uh, this is my jam. This is absolutely my favorite thing. Just because of the style that they went for, I love the old school visuals, I love the portraits. Uh, it, it may be simple, but it's definitely satisfying. So first choice is male and female. It is really, really minor. You can see over here, the difference is that the male has a beard, and you can even take the beard off, and then it's sort of similar, uh, you know? And the female doesn't have the beard. So, like, if you do it like this, with, with facial hairstyle 10, it's the same. So, don't stress too much about this. However, it is used to address you in-game. In other words, if you are a male or a female, that is how they will address you in the game. Keep that in mind, right? So, I will show you the male customization. Uh, I'll just leave it on there for now, and we'll just go through all of it, and then I'll show you the facial hair sort of separately, and you'll see as we go down, basically. Portrait. Now, male and female can share the portraits, so you can do whatever you want here. I love the portraits. There are so many cool ones. And again, I mean... You know, I grew up playing games like this. Ultima 7 is my favorite game of all time, basically. Uh, and it just reminds me so much of that. There are some really cool portraits here. And you can you can pretty much take a portrait and then tailor your, your character's visual appearance to that portrait and make it sort of look like that. Uh, but again, there are lots of decent options here. And you'll definitely find something that works for you. It's even got a guy with a pipe here. It's kind of nice. They have a lot of ethnicities, they have a lot of different styles uh, in terms of the hair and the face and like the scarring and the extras. Um, it again does, you can see it doesn't affect the character itself over here, uh, but it will be seen all the time. You'll have it here in your portrait and it's, uh, it's an important choice. So pick wisely what you're going to go for here. Uh, there are a lot of cool ones to consider and we're back at the start. Let's go through them one more time because there is a lot to see here. Um, I dig it. I dig it. I have literally just got no notes. Wh whoever the artist was working on this game, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, they managed to put enough detail in here for it to look sort of yeah, discernible enough, unique enough on every portrait. Uh, but they didn't put so much in that it ruins the old school style of the game, you know? And then they also seem to tend to have like the male and female variations of all these different types, which kind of uh, works, you know? It's a nice feeling that you can sort of find an equivalent on either side. And then they've got some look, sort, of, sort of exciting ones here <laughs> with brighter hair colors and stuff like that. It's cool. It's really cool. So there you go. One more time. That's what they look like. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on the default one for now. It's no biggie. Uh, then, hairstyle. Let's have a peek. These are the same on male and female. Now keep in mind, it's very small, but you're going to be looking at this the entire game long, so you still want to pick the one that you want to pick, right? They've got like shaved heads here, they've got ponytails, they've got long hair, they've got short hair. Uh, you can also change the hair color in a moment. I'll show you how that works. Not a huge amount, but there's definitely enough, right? So let's take this one, and then we're going to look at the facial hair quickly. Keep in mind, the females can't have facial hair. Not a huge amount in terms of facial hair, and I'll change the color quickly so you can see. Uh, there are longer beards here, there are shorter, fuller beards, and then you can also go fully shaved or with just a mustache if you want. It's kind of cool. Yeah, 
Kind of cool. I, 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 funny enough, I like the way the beards look. It's like, it's, it's, it's strange to say that when I'm saying that about literally, I think it's about six pixels. Six pixels on the character, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good beard. <laughs> Guys, can I just say the amount of mastery it takes to make something look like a beard using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pixels. Seven pixels. Seven little squares. And they made it look like a beard. Dude. Phenomenal. 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 I love it. So that's the beard. That's the beard. Let's take it off quickly. Put it on female, then you're not going to see it there. Let me look at the hair colors. Decent selection of colors here as well. Very decent. The only complaint that I have when it comes to the hair colors is that they do not have the purple pinky style, bluey purpley pinky style, this one, as a hair color choice. Only complaint. <laughs> That's literally the only complaint I have. There's no other complaint. <laughs> then you can do the uh, skin tone. Yeah, you got two different choices. You got like a pale one and a darker one. Then you can do your outfit. Yeah, you can do your outfit. And this is probably the most impactful. Like funny, usually when I do character creation and I'm talking about the appearances and stuff, the most impactful stuff is, is you know, the character itself, the face, the hair, uh, the skin color, stuff like that. But in this game, I think it's a bit more impactful changing the, the, the character's outfit because like it's a bigger, it's a bigger impact that you're going to be having. Uh, now, there are some decent colors here. Uh, I went for like a pure black one, but I went for the off black, this one, which looks kind of glossy, and I really dig that. I think it's amazing. It's a really nice color, but there are decent choices here, and uh, those of you that are good at crafting, you know, characters and, and thinking up styles and thinking up different combos and stuff like that, you'll have fun here. Yeah. You'll be able to do some cool stuff. I enjoyed this one. Secondary color is your pants. They have all the same colors, so you can mix and match. You can... You can have like the same or you can have uh, colors that complement one another so if you do the same same black top black bottom uh, it's easy to do because you can just do primary tertiary and uh, and uh, primary secondary and tertiary the same uh, but if you if you like you can just go for one full color and it actually looks really good um, but you can also sort of mix and match as I said you can you can come up with good color combinations here but there you go oh, I really like that one dude Number 13. Yeah, ooh, that's mysterious. It sort of makes me think of velvet, you know? <laughs> that's fantastic. Then you can randomize. And randomize is actually really good, man. It gives you a bunch of really cool looking characters. They obviously don't pick a portrait that matches the character's uh, body over here, but they absolutely give you a decent look at what's available. So there you go. Randomize. If you do not feel like customizing it yourself, yeah, you can leave it up to chance and just click the randomize button a bunch of times and start the game. That does, however, bring us to the end of this character creation video. <sighs> I've got nothing but good to say. Skulled against the Black Priory is just fantastic. The character creation system it's perfect for this style of game. They give you a robust selection when it comes to the classes, when it comes to the backgrounds and the attributes and the feats. I mean, the feats are... Oh, oh, wow, man. Uh, there's so much going on there. And then the overall style. I mean, they nailed it. They did. Now, I know this kind of game isn't for everyone. I mean, that's obvious. Not everyone likes the pixel art. Not everyone likes this old school type of game and that's understandable and that's totally fair but if this is the kind of game that you enjoy you will have a field day there is so much cool stuff the game itself i want to talk and talk and talk and talk about it because i have so much good to say i've enjoyed every moment that i've played there is a fantastic world to explore there's deep lore with the story that they present to you, but then also with the world attached to it. They hide the lore 
and you have to go out looking for it and when you find it it feels super rewarding because it's also interesting the combat is really fun the music oh my god i cannot get enough of the music and the visual style is an absolute treat so yeah like i mean with the character creation they nailed it with the gameplay they nailed it with everything else they nailed it i'm biased yeah sue me okay <laughs> i am i am biased but i cannot say enough good about Scald. so there you go guys buy this game enjoy this game and tell me in the comment section what your favorite part of it is mine the music and the visuals but then also the world and the story oh man and if you want to leave some like you know nice words for the devs say some kind stuff about the game tell them that their fears were unfounded they thought they didn't have enough in this character creation system to show off <laughs> man were they wrong all right guys check back here soon for more give this one a like share it and do all that other good stuff you can find a link to its steam page below if you want to go and check it out for yourself you can find my links to uh, my coffee page and my twitch channel can be found linked below and all the rest hey go well be cool happy that <laughs>